I was working for Sony, which was, um, uh, <laughs> it's a great company to be honest. Then most of the teachers, most of the people around you will recommend the big companies. More and more of those startups popping up. I don't believe there's much stability, even the big corporations. Hey, welcome to the Tokyo State of Mind. As always, we're here on this podcast, delivering you the inspiring stories of our passionate guests. And we're all here to inspire you and to, for you to feel good about yourself and your life in Japan. Our episode about job hunting was very successful. Thank you guys for commenting and asking questions. We definitely wanted to elaborate more on the work and career in Japan. And for that purpose, I'm very happy to introduce you to our guest who is a very passionate and positive person, who is our Max senpai and a CEO of a company, WorkStyle Tech. You will be, I think, very excited to know that this is a guy who uh, propagating the idea of Purple Cow, Gustavo Dore. Yeah. Hey! Thank you very much. Thanks yeah. for coming, Gustavo. So, uh, I'm from Brazil, if anyone have any questions, because nobody tells <laughs> I'm from Brazil. But just to, to push on that, it's just because in Japan, when sometimes you go to Shinagawa Station or Shinbashi Station, and then yeah. you see everybody in the suits and they feel like ants, right? <laughs> and I, I don't want to be an ant. You, you, want to be a, you want to feel a little bit special, right? Right. So yeah, anyway, uh, I feel more people should have that in mind. So I try to be colorful today. I'm less colorful, just a little bit stamped, but... Yeah, I think you I have your be... own Gustavo fashion. Like yeah. last time when <laughs> we were at the Max, uh, um, what was the symposium? Like you were also wearing very colorful Yes, yes, suit, yes. Yeah. I try to, to, to wear something that calls up attention. Just to break down from that dark Japanese style. Like, yeah. uh, uh, like my wife tells me I have no sense of seasons. <laughs> just because I'm always colorful. And she was like, no, in the winter, people use a little bit more uh, oh. toned down clothes and stuff. And I was like, really? But so boring. And, and then you're like, <laughs> anyway. no, Christmas every day. Kind of, kind of, <laughs> kind of. I'm, it's funny that like you mentioned that because I also have a, a friend from Portugal. And I think I was annoying this guy all the time because I, we were like walking and just out of nowhere, I was singing Christmas song. And he's like, not again. <laughs> just stop it. <laughs> <laughs> so it, you don't have to be it's not a japanese uh, only thing like some, yeah, 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 some people yes, don't yes. really like i, I the... have no idea of, <laughs> just i'm so at sony when i worked there as well and at recruit people used to tell me the same thing so uh i feel a little special about it because i'm dressing more or less the same the whole year <laughs> <laughs> except for some coats because it gets good right so um i think a lot of people are like interested like you have you you lived here for 13 years yep. that's quite a long story and this is a regular question that we asked our guests is oh, yes, how did you come to japan so my first i first came to japan in 2006 so i was at the university so i was in brazil and i was studying mass communications because i had no idea what i wanted to do so i just chose something that was a little bit more fun to do it's like, you know, journalism, you meet interesting people. Uh, it's going to be fun to do this. And then I didn't, uh, I was a little lost. And I remember breaking down with, uh, breaking up with a three-year-old girlfriend at that time. And I was feeling kind of down. And because I was feeling down, one of my friends said, oh, I'm going to go to this party. You should come with me. You shouldn't be feeling down at home. So he took me to that party and then, one of the uh, person, one of the friends of his friends on the party said, uh, Dory, you look like the type who would like to go abroad. It's like, but I have no money. And I was like, no, no, but the university has some exchange programs. You should go there. And then I went there in the next, it was a Friday night. I went there the next Monday. And then they were like, oh, we are actually selecting right now. You can choose Japan, uh, Germany, or uh, US, Colorado College, Passau University, or uh, in Makuhari, Kandagaigo University. Mm -hmm. And I was like, 
uh, America, everybody goes. It's kind I know of, this I wouldn't feeling, feel right? special anymore. <laughs> yeah. Right? The whole point is feeling special, right? So, and I was divided between Germany and Japan. And I got lucky to meet a few um, exchange students, Japanese exchange students in Brazil. And they're like, oh, this guy is so nice. And Japan's kind of exotic. So maybe it's going to be fun. It's just, I, I could choose between six months or a year. It was like, oh, it's just six months. Maybe, maybe I can extend to a year if I like it. So eventually, uh, I had to do a test. And I, I'm glad I had good grades and stuff. And I passed the test, got the scholarship, came to study in Kandagaigo University for about 10 months, like two, two semesters, right? Close to 11 months. And then I went back to Brazil. Now I could speak a little bit of Japanese, but I was like, I'm not going back to Japan again. I had my Japan experience and that's about it. Then I was close to graduate. I was like, oh, I don't want to uh, find a job right away because I still don't know what to do. Mm -hmm. So I might as well. Uh, and I was, I, start, I was working already in a marketing department. So I was doing university at night. So I would work from eight to five and go to university from like six to 11 at night with a pre-packaged schedule. But I was like, uh, I'm working already and I feel that that's not really what I want to do in my future, but I don't know what I want to do in my future. I might try to change things on, on grad school. And I started looking places who had scholarships for grad school. And US has a lot for PhDs, but not so many for masters. Yeah. And I went, my, my brother was living in Australia at that time. And I was like, I went to visit him in Australia and look around and they're like, no, we also don't have much for masters, just for PhD. And running around was like, oh, Japan has one for masters. Mm -hmm. And now I lived here a little bit, I might as well uh, do it again. And that's, so to be honest, the money brought me to Japan. <laughs> yeah, yeah, to have a chance to have a scholarship. Like, right. It's a pretty good deal for, for somebody is who is deal. from yeah. Brazil or countryside and not, not have much money, you know. It, it's really cool. I think that something that probably a lot of people can definitely relate to. I think Japan is definitely one of those countries that gets, gives you the a good deal it doesn't yeah, yeah, yeah. because they don't only cover your uh, tuition but they give you the scholarship so you don't have to work extra yeah i made the the amount one day and it's close to his same money would be like they spent close to a hundred thousand dollars in tuition fees right. and and rent and and giving me an extra living expenses I, i'm very grateful to the japanese government so that's a great deal, yeah. And of course, like a lot of people, we know you as, as like this lucky guy who worked for, for Sony. And um, I think in your blog, you also were uh, mentioning this idea that there is more life um, in, there's there's a diff more life um, than working for a big company. Oh, yeah. Yes, Can yes, you yes. elaborate more on that? Okay, so um, when we were, when I was at uh, grad school, so you have to do job hunting, like, not that you have to do, but you have to have some earning eventually so you can pay off whatever bills you have, right? Unless you have rich parents, which is a different story. But even if you have rich parents in Japan, if they are not like absurd rich, if they're just okay with money, you still have to work just to get the visa. Because mm. uh, if you have a lot of money and you listen to this, there is this thing called the entrepreneur visa. That if you get around gohyakumoi, so that would be like 50,000 US dollars in a Japanese bank account, and you open a company here, then you get a visa as an entrepreneur. And then you don't have to actually do job hunting, you can live here um, doing whatever you want. But that's, it's kind of a big amount of money for most people if you are still in your 20s. So I didn't have that much money at, at the time. And uh, okay, so when you're, finishing school and like, I have to have some job, some money. Then most of the teachers, most of the people around you will recommend the big companies or you're gonna look around the internet and the big companies, they spend a lot of advertisement. Mm -hmm. So that's what shows up. Mm. And then when you go into their websites and most of them looks pretty boring and you're like, uh, I don't have much to look forward in life, but 
in 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 there's in, in Japan, I would say I, I don't have the exact number, although I saw this number a few times. I would say maybe like 90 to 95 percent of companies are small companies. Mm -hmm. Just number uh, uh, statistically speaking. Wow. You're gonna have more small companies than big companies, right? Right. Yeah. Right. So, and those ninety percent of the companies, they don't get the same advertising budget to be out there. Mm -hmm. But they have sometimes a great package of salary, lifestyle, and uh, job satisfaction that very people know of. And I live in this startup community now because I did my own company, and I see my company, my friends' companies. The employees are very happy. They they have a uh, very more meaningful life because if you are in this big company, there is this, uh, for sure, I was in a big company. It was a lot of fun because you don't have to worry about money. Like money is just kind of some magical thing. You do your job very well. You get um, a good salary, a good family package and all that. Having said that, sometimes uh, it's not that fulfilling because you don't have that much power and whatever you do, there's like several layers of mm. decision making. So you, you want to make something and then you have to convince the kacho and then the kakaricho and then the bucho and then like big company politics, right? But if you are in a company with 20 people, 30 people, uh, you might not have the, the package benefits that they give you, but whatever decision you make, they just go with that decision. Mm -hmm. So you feel you are making a difference. Yeah, you own it. You right? own it, yeah. right? And then if the company grows big, you might grow big together. And so you were the number two or number three designer or engineer in that little startup. And they went very well. And now they have 300 people or something. And you are the top manager because you were there in the mm. beginning. And although Japan is not considered to be a super entrepreneurial company, um, I am in a world where I'm seeing more and more of those startups popping up. Mm -hmm. And the only way they can compete with the big corporations is to offer a more flexible package. Mm -hmm. So people, for example, in my company, I don't look at hours or vacations. So people take two, three vacations a year. Sometimes they go back to their countries or... Um, they might work sometimes. So I have this uh, employee, she, she has two kids and her husband doesn't help much at home. So she wakes up around 5.30. So she works from 5.30 close to 7-ish. Then she takes the kids to school. She does uh, a little bit of uh, cleaning up her home. And then she works back from 9 until 4. Then she picks up the kids at school and then she kind of sleeps very early, like 10, like 9.30 mm -hmm. together with the kids. But for her, she's super happy because she was able to find the, 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 balance. the balance for her, for her. And people have different balances there where they are more productive, where they, she, she's a very morning person. So she wouldn't do late hours, but she does it before. Mm -hmm. And that's fine as long as she gets the job done. Right. But what happens in a big corporation they don't trust people enough to give them those flexibility. Mm -hmm. Some companies are changed now with the corona. That that really was a game changer. Mm -hmm. But in general, in general, they still will ask you to be there at nine and leave at seven. And there was like this. And long, I'm going a little bit uh, out of the way here. But the point is, if you're looking for a job where you want if you believe life is all about stability and stuff, go for the big corporation. But I don't believe there's much stability, even the big corporations. Yeah, Toshiba wasn't you can be laid off out. simply, right? Yeah, you can be <laughs> laid off. Even though in Japan they say, oh, they won't lay you off. But at Sony, Sony has this, uh, Sony doesn't lay people off, mm -hmm. but they have this place inside Sony called uh, Career Design Center. Mm -hmm. which means you were laid off for your department, but they can't fire you. So they send you to this department where your job is to look for another job inside the company. What? So you go there, you have a PC. And I, and I think it's a great thing that they have that. Interesting. Because they have so much money that they can afford to have people looking for it. And then you go there, you have a PC. Yeah. It's like now choose another job inside Sony uh -huh. and apply and go to meet the managers until somebody accepts you back. Interesting. Into the game, right? It's, yeah. it's, it's very interesting how, how yeah. they can 
uh, make that non-firing right. policy. Yeah, 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 it's like you're in an incubator. Like. <laughs> yeah, yes, 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 exactly, exactly. <laughs> But I, I think that's amazing that Sun is one of the few companies who can do that because they yeah. make uh, can, so much money. Can you just from the beginning like be um, <laughs> hired on on, to, on this? No, no, no. <laughs> they won't hire you in the career design center. But uh, it. So what happens is, um, if you were sent there, it means it didn't work out, mm -hmm. right? It, it, it means you were fired from whatever department mm -hmm. you were in. They just don't fire you. <laughs> so the people there are not that happy because they have to, right. to and, keep looking. Right? And do people look down on you if you're in this incubator? Um, not a, so, how can I say? Uh, they look with you not as your fire, but more if you're lost in life a little bit. Oh, I see, I see. So they are more understandable. Yes, okay. yeah, it's like, oh, I feel sorry that you you you, you are there. <laughs> like, I hope you find some uh, some place soon it's kind of your like without a job I but you're see. <laughs> I see. I'll, I'll check my department if i can find something that, that that's the conversation that happens was it the this experience that uh, inspired your current um, company because i know that you guys are trying what you're trying to do is to create happier workplaces oh yes yeah so it definitely it was so what happened was i was working for sony which was, um, uh, it's a great company, to be honest. Like people are very mindful, a lot of smart people around and the salary is good and the package is good and, and you're doing interesting things around the globe. Having said that, um, I'm a very anxious person and I want to, I want to feel special as well, right? I want to grow, I'm very uh, prone to flattery. And what I felt was I was doing well but it was like, how do I become a manager? How do I get a higher position? It was all about position at that time for me, mm -hmm. at that stage in my life. I, I wasn't caring about the money. I wanted to be able to make, to have more decision power. And the Sony HR and the managers told me, oh, you have to be around 35 to, in, to try to get in any manager position. I'm 35 now. I already sold the company and I'm running like, yeah, yeah. I, I already did so much, but they just don't trust in young people still. Mm -hmm. So they, they really believe in the seniority growing plan in Japan only. So you go to the US and the top manager there was like 33. And it's like, why, why, why? Like, mm -hmm. So I was frustrated with that. Then I moved it to another company, Recruit, Recruto, uh, Recruto Technologies. Uh, I was there. And I, they, they have a different culture. Having said that, they are... Uh, mostly a HR company as their main business. They have lots of business like Jalan uh, for uh, traveling. It's the booking.com of Japan. They have Sumo, which is the house finding for, mm -hmm. for Japanese. Yeah. They have a lot of um, things. And, but their main business is still HR. They bought Indeed. So if you're a foreigner looking for jobs in Indeed, it's owned by Recruit. And I was there and then uh, Recruit was great, but I start to visit recruit clients and recruit clients, very sad people. <laughs> like not, not, not all because we, I was in this department where I meet top companies in Japan. I won't say the name of the companies, but like the, the most profitable top 30 companies in Japan. And I'm visiting the HR of all of them. And it's like, and I visit the HR, I visit the company, I walk around the company a little bit talk with some managers, talk with some people. It's like, wow, these people are like very unhappy. They're just like robots. They, 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 they're just doing their jobs. They, they are not most of them. They, right? don't, they don't look like they're living their life. Right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. They don't look like they are living life, right? They're, they're, a lot of them are like not very healthy, a little like <sighs> always with the tiring phase. Mm -hmm. And it was like, why is two, at that time it was like 2014 2015 it was like 2015 you know life can be better because i know that because sony was good and recruit is good and then i go to those place and they are still like old factory style mm -hmm. so there is this distinction on work uh there is this book called why we work it's a hundred page book you can read uh, in an hour or so. 
But um, the theory in that book that I really liked it was that humans, the, the industrial revolution made a great job of bringing people out of poverty, right? Yeah. So if you have a factory in the city, but uh, uh, you, you have a lot of people working and that's great. And you got Japan as the max of that. Right. Having said that, the trade-off that happened there is that you break the job into very small jobs with defined tasks that you don't have to think much to do. You just go there and, and mm -hmm. do that defined task. Mm -hmm. So there is very little margin error and stuff. But it's not very happy to do those kind of yeah, very minimal jobs. Yeah, get bored. Yeah, yeah. So in the past, shogunai, right? There's no nothing we can be helped because that's just life. But now with um, AI, with robots, with a lot of new things that we can do, can we stop doing those small, s silly jobs like and break down the jobs and try to say, okay, what can we automate in all that? Mm -hmm. And let's make humans do more thinking work mm -hmm. and making more decisions. Right. Right. And I was like, how can, how can I help? And at the beginning, I felt uh, one, I still feel very strong about it. One thing is who makes those decisions about those jobs? It's mostly the manager who is there. Who, So if you think about a company, you have the CEO and then you have like Bucho and all those levels, but still in the, the smaller cell is you, maybe six or seven people to one manager. In, mm -hmm. in general, that's more or less the amount you get per per manager. And that's like the, the bottom of the pyramid. And that's where most of the work really happens, right? Because you're working there and checking. And that person here who runs that small company, that small department, he has a lot of... Uh, sometimes he might feel he doesn't have that much power, but he has a lot of power on the people, on those people's lives. Because he can decide how big their jobs is, how thoughtful the work's gonna be. Yeah, it's gonna just do what I say, or okay, mm. think and bring me the, depending on the style of the manager. So I start believing that if I could improve the management style of people, I could improve people happier at work because those managers would improve how their employees uh, work and make better decisions. Having said that, it wasn't a, a, a easy sell for the companies mm -hmm. because a lot of the companies they are okay if they are making money to mm -hmm. make their employees okay happier because at least everybody has food on the table. Yeah, yeah. yeah. They, then they they are not really open to change. Yeah, yeah. They, they don't see the point. Yeah, right. And they're like, ah, you know, I, and this was what 2015 when i started thinking and discussing with companies and things like that and to be honest i was very pleased like last year this year a lot of companies are way more open yeah i think it's also the generational of... thing maybe yes, like yes, the younger yes. generation they want to be happy they want to be purposeful at their exactly, job exactly right? exactly so sometimes i i go to a company and i'm waiting for the the younger uh, manager <laughs> yeah no no i'm waiting for the the hr to, to do a sales speech yeah and some people sit close to to me i normally talk with them like why you came here and, and that and i remember uh, very vivid uh, about two years ago i sat down and there was these two girls and they look at like the shinsots the new grads in japan you know mm -hmm. the girls in suits and they like very blank makeup and mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and i said oh what, what you guys coming here oh we came for interview and they said oh good luck in your interview why you chose this company specifically and they told me exactly that i was like uh um csr their their, their environment uh conscious is very good and they do a lot of projects for the community mm -hmm. and it was like oh th that did went through like mm -hmm. they're not talking about money or they're not they're, uh, that brought those two girls mm -hmm. in the company and yeah it changed generation so um it was a hard sell and i said okay i'm meeting with this hr and they're like yeah we understand we don't need to do anything urgent kind of thing. 
It's like, okay, so what, what's your challenge now? Then I talk with them and they're like, we are unhappy. The HR themselves. And so oh, you, you understand the, 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 the logic. Yeah, I think it's more like the misery needs the company. If they're unhappy, they, they make sure that other people are unhappy yeah, too, right? Of, yeah, yeah, because <laughs> they are just so much worried about their, their own problems. Yeah. But for sure, in their job description, there should be something like looking for the whole company, right? right. But it's not. So most of their job descriptions, most a lot paper handling mm -hmm. and like being compliance with the law and hiring is like talking with the, the, the uh, medias to, to get more people to apply and then pass that to the managers. Yeah. So there's a lot of like labor work in, yeah. in the HR and not much thinking work. And they're mm -hmm. like, but we are unhappy. Mm -hmm. Like, well, what, why are you unhappy? And they're like, oh, because it's still so much paperwork you can see here. And it's like, okay. Yeah. So maybe instead of uh, doing the manager stuff that I still believe in, I should focus more on helping the HR. Yeah. And then they have some peace of mind and then they can do something. And then I change it. Um, I sold this other, this first company called Motify. Mm -hmm. I sold that to another company called Axe Consulting. I really like them. I still meet with them often. I was talking with the CEO this morning. Mm -hmm. We have a lot in common because they have a bigger structure mm -hmm. so they can uh, handle better the consulting and, and mm -hmm. meeting with the managers and stuff. They have better relationships. And me as a startup, I can do more IT work. So mm -hmm. I started, I changed the company name to Work Style Tech. So it would give me like work tech kind of thing. Yeah. yeah. And uh, now my product is called Welcome HR. Mm -hmm. It's mostly about uh, paperwork for the HR automation kind of thing. So when you join a company, mm -hmm. they're going to give you a contract and, yeah. and you're going to have to add your ID and those kind of things, right? Mm -hmm. So uh, the company can invite you from the cell phone and you can do everything from the cell phone very That's quickly. Good. Yeah. yeah. Impressively, that, that doesn't happen in most part of the world from what I've seen. So I already opened a company in Brazil. Wow. So, yes. So and, cool. Yeah. So we are selling, we're going to start selling a little bit there by the end of this uh, year as well. And I hope to grow to other countries as well, because there is this common thing of contracts, digital contracts that a lot of countries were against. So that held back. Yeah. But with Corona. The rules change, right? <laughs> That's true. So let's do more online stuff. And exactly. now the HR, I'm, at first, I'm making the HR happier. But because I'm digitalizing that kind of stuff, the employees are kind of happier too because they don't have to do much paperwork and that brings them some uh, mm -hmm. breath to think. Sounds like you're in a very happy place right now. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> great. We, we did some uh, funding this year we got some money in, we hired some good people, the company's selling well, we're selling to big companies, the top lines are going well. Um, what else? It's, no, it, it, everything's great. My, my marriage is good, my, <laughs> my kids are healthy. It's amazing. Yeah. And it sounds like uh, when I was reading your blog, um, I couldn't notice um, how um you really put a lot of like importance um into the uh, friendship and the human relationships so and i feel like that's something maybe that definitely like supports you morally like when you're for your business and definitely uh, true, in life so um for for people who are just like starting their careers or starting out here what would be your greatest um advice on like building relationships here in japan so I think my be the best ad advice I can give is to make Japanese friends. And, and I, I mentioned that when I was doing the speech for the uh, Max speech as well for the, the Monbu Kagak Show, the Minister of Education here in Japan, which for sure, it's easier to make foreigner friends in Japan yeah. because you can instant relate. Mm -hmm. So I, I came here to do this podcast. I met some of your uh, teammates and uh, we can instantly connect and talk about the places we lived, the, uh, about uh, the experience who brought us here because kind of everybody has a similar background. But then 
when you have to make friends with the Japanese people, they already have their friends. Mm -hmm. So not all of them are looking for a new friend. Yeah. You, you, you know what I mean? Like, yeah, yeah. So it needs to be an effort from your part mm -hmm. to say, um, blah, 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 uh, uh, nani, nani san. Mm -hmm. I like you. I, I think we would hang out well. Yeah. Let's have dinner together. Let's have lunch together. Mm -hmm. And that does not come naturally. Mm. So my, my suggestion is, so there is this book called uh, Never Eat Alone. <laughs> and the, the book is just, oh, it's about relationship making and about connections and stuff. But the guy said, okay, eating is such an important part of the day. And if you're using your productive hours to really get job done, mm -hmm no matter who you are, you have to stop. Even if you're eating while working, while you're putting the food in your mouth, there's some minutes there that mm -hmm. you're not working, right? Exactly. So use that consciously. And I don't mean like to do it too much, but maybe once a week, twice a week, have some lunch. I, I prefer lunch than dinners, to be honest, because mm. lunch has a good time frame of cutting. Yeah. While dinner sometimes it might go too much and be too expensive. Lunches are kind right. of cheap. So I do a lot of lunches with people I wanted to be mm -hmm. better connected to or, or just to make relationships. And uh, then those become uh, partnerships in the future. Or So my job at Sony, for example, for sure, I got uh, some proposal from a, a teacher to meet the people from Sony and stuff. Having said that, I was very divided. Should I join Sony or not? Uh, even though the brand is great and stuff, uh, maybe I could have gone to the PhD. Mm -hmm. uh, maybe I could have gone to Google. You know that like yeah. Sony wasn't the, the top company at the time anymore. But then I called some of my friends from uh, grad school, mm -hmm. and there was this guy who lived who lived uh, <coughs> who was working for Sony, and he, we talked for about two to three hours, where he just like explained me in very detail about the company, and I'm very glad to him, Ozaksan. Thank you. Very great senpai. And, yes. And then what happened was after about two years, two years and a half, close to three years, I started to be unhappy at Sony because I couldn't get promoted. And um, I went back to another university friend, Japanese, and I said, uh, let's have dinner together. So uh, what do you recommend me to do? And then he said, oh, recruits, great. I work there. And, and actually, because I came through kind of his recommendation, I worked together with him, mm -hmm. like literally side by his desk mm -hmm. for about seven to eight months, mm -hmm. which was great. You know, you have a friend. Yeah. And now you're working like same project with one of your best friends. Like I had a great time there. So uh, my, my recommendation is to me. And the problem with the foreigners, and I have a lot of foreign friends, and I still meet a lot of foreigners, is that 90% uh, go back eventually and it's it's not not all of them want to go back life happens the parents die the brothers get in an accident their family company breaks and they have to to go back to support so life happens at home <coughs> and if you don't have a japanese support so now that i got older i started making friends with the, the my kids school's parents like so I have some Japanese support as well. And it's fun, come on. Yeah, that's that's very true. I can relate to that. I also have some really great Japanese friends. And I feel like they're, they're just... One thing that I can say, say about them, they're just really loyal. And they... Very if, true. If they very create true. some time for you, they really do it like with all their hearts. Yes, and yes, purpose. yes, yes. <laughs> and, and I try to bring that to my company as well. So for sure, I... I I tell everybody in my company, like we, we are a bunch of professionals that just join together. Everyone here could be a freelancer just doing the job because yeah. I don't want them to feel, I, I don't like that idea of company equals family mm -hmm. because family, I believe more in unconditional love in a sense, yeah. right? Like my daughter don't needs to do anything for me to like her. She right. just need to exist kind of thing. Yeah. <laughs> but companies are, it's very conditional. Like yes. I like you because 
we work well together and we are doing we are mm -hmm. going together in the same objective more like a sports team kind mm -hmm. of thing. and but at the same time if you don't if you're not working with your friends you're not having fun so yeah. i we have at my company this family day once a month mm -hmm. where we actually i don't do much nomikais at night so like mm. we use company time like one friday every month one friday after 12 mm -hmm. you can just bring kids as well and we normally rent a place mm -hmm. and then everybody brings their wives and their husbands and mm -hmm. we hang around if you were like to look back at like all the experiences and your career here uh what would be the things that you would think like oh i wish i knew that like i oh, wish i yeah. di didn't do that like so because i'm very anxious in a sense um i i i had some very lows in a sense like everybody has them and i'll yeah. tell about the lows so we get uh more uh connection as well because now i'm doing okay and then everybody feels and i'm i'm in general i'm a happy person even and because of that, you have the clown syndrome, right? Uh, I'm always smiling, even though I might be... <laughs> clown syndrome, I yeah, like yeah. it. <laughs> I, I might be uh, sad inside, right? <laughs> so the, the, uh, the, there's a lot of jokes in, in that. But having said that, I think um, both when I was at Sony, when I was at Recruit, I could have taken my life as a more, uh, it's my own thing, it's my problem, instead of blaming on others. And I had to go through that blaming, because I, I might say, for example, I'm at Sony and I say, oh, I don't get promoted. Oh, that manager is an asshole. Oh, that manager is a terrible person. All oh, those HR, they know nothing about running a company. And then I go at recruit and I'm like, Oh, they're not utilizing me well. They know they don't know how to handle foreign girls. They, you, you understand? You create that blaming culture, and and I was blaming on other people a lot, and that didn't brought me any happiness. Actually, just brought me down. And I was like, I would get home, and because I'm blaming other people, I have to talk with my wife, and I was like, Oh, that oh, I'm working under that manager. Mm -hmm. <sighs> He's Oh, he, and sometimes oh, he's just my age and he doesn't know more than me why he's my boss I don't understand like that kind of thing and um, it doesn't bring a happy home either because you know somebody's just complaining all the time <laughs> like, <laughs> right and, and and I had those periods in my life that um, I, I for the first years of running my own business that hold me back a lot because sometimes I wouldn't get a sale or I wouldn't get something. And I was like, oh, it's blah, 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 failure. Or, and, and it's all, it was all me. And when I was in the company or when I was in grad school, and it was all me. Now, now I know that because I went through some soul searching uh, through the years. But uh, at Sony, I could have uh, handled things different. I could have a change of departments. I could have um, run at an underground operation like some of other friends I have there do, where they, they do have the management stuff and then they get a few hours a day and do their own projects, uh, hidden for everybody. And then when the project blooms, finally, mm -hmm. like that there's there's other ways. You don't always have to do guerrilla stuff, but yeah. it's, it's one option. When I was at Recruit as well, I could have uh, own own the problem mm. instead of blaming uh, on other people. So it, it's less related to uh, something that happened in Japan or it's not really related to Japan, but about that blaming culture. So what happened to change me? What, what changed me? Um, it wasn't from, from zero. So I read a lot. And I decided to read more because of being uh, a CEO. I had to, I, I had no idea of how to run a company, so I started reading a bunch. So, for example, last year, now I'm a little proud of my record. Last year was 127 books. But this year is going to be something like uh, 30, 40, because I, I changed the style a little bit. Because it, 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 
it doesn't really fix so much the content. So mm -hmm. now I'm going more for quality. But having said that, then I, I started reading a lot of books. So you, even if you don't have positive friends around you, and if you, if you don't have positive role models mm -hmm. that you can find around you, there's a lot of uh, really good books that those writers, if you read a lot, they kind of your not they're not your real friends, but they can be right. your mentors mm -hmm. in a sense. And since I had nothing to lose, I might as well just do what what what's written. I I don't think I have uh, one specific book, but maybe ten or twenty that made made the mark okay. uh, around. Can we put them into in the recommendation oh, later? Yeah, yeah. I, I think, think a lot a of people would about, appreciate it. Yeah, yes, yes, for sure. And one of them is is it's about that, about this blame culture and, mm -hmm. and stuff. And I was like, okay, okay. And I, I remember I read the book and I it didn't took me right away. Then I was presenting. So there is one specific book that I like. It's called uh, Leadership and Self-Deception. Mm -hmm. So it, it's about that. You blame other people. Then you put them, uh, the book used this metaphor of a box, but imagine, yeah, I, I'm dealing with you right now. Mm -hmm. And then I ask you to do something for me and you didn't do it the way I wanted. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So I say, oh, I can't ask anything to come either anymore. <laughs> and then I'd stop asking you to do stuff, but you're still my team. You're still my company. So now I have somebody who is underutilized, right? Mm -hmm. So I start asking someone else instead of teaching you how to do it or mm. or to asking for your opinion on how you sh think it should be done better. Yeah, you, yeah. you understand? Right, that, right. It's more like I feel like it's like a miscommunication problem yes. in a lot of ways, right? Yes, yes. Because and yeah. I think I had a lot of lows in my life related to that, but it was one of those lows in my life who brought me to open the company. Mm -hmm. So I was mentioning about the manager. Yeah. And I came home one day talking with my wife. I tell the story because it's my origin story. And I was like, oh, I hate that manager because he's not uh, that good of a manager and stuff. And it clicked that I saw my dad in me. I was like, oh, my dad said the same thing about, I don't know, 25 years ago when I was a kid. Mm -hmm. and like probably with similar words mm -hmm. it's like oh i became my dad <laughs> and that's like that yeah thing of for sure there's no problem becoming your dad right yeah but you don't want like you want to be better than your dad <laughs> you, <laughs> right, right. <laughs> you don't want to re repeat the same mistakes yeah yeah you don't yeah. want to do the same mistakes my dad worked very hard so i could yeah <laughs> do better than him and i was just in the same place and I was like, how do I break down from being my dad all over again? Mm -hmm. And I was like, okay, so maybe if I work in a culture that was way more free. I didn't want to open a company at first. I was like, I might as well just work for a company who has that culture. Mm -hmm. And I looked for about three to four months, a, a bunch of startups. I did some job interviews and stuff. I couldn't find a company. I might as well just mm -hmm. try myself to do the challenge yes yeah that's that's cool i that it's 137 books wow like i'm very interested in what kind of books are oh are most those. are business books and <laughs> they're, they're easy to read right so um for for again for the people who are just like on the beginning of their career like for the fresh graduates like um one last piece of advice from gustavo what would it oh, be oh if, if if you want to live in Japan, yes, mm -hmm. it's just learn Japanese, learn Japanese, learn <laughs> Japanese, learn Japanese, learn Japanese, learn Japanese. Because <laughs> yeah, it, it, it's any. I wouldn't say any country, but it's same with Brazil. If you want to live in Brazil as well, mm -hmm. you can't go without Portuguese in Brazil because mm -hmm. nine five percent of the population just speak Portuguese, they yeah. don't speak English, and similar here. So learn Japanese, learn Japanese, learn the language. And by learning the language, the culture kind of comes together Yeah. because language is very related to culture. And so that would be priority number one. Taking aside, if it's not Japan, but just like uh, finding a job or I, I was telling them um, in the preparation for the interview, 
Uh, I like a lot planning. I really like planning. I think uh, it puts me in peace mm -hmm. to to have some clear things to do next. So now every time I'm lost and I don't, I'm I'm a person who have a billion interests. I like gaming. I like manga. I like traveling. I like um, uh, playing uh, with friends. I like food. I like everything. Kind of. I really enjoy living in this world kind of thing. Have you said that? So I can't make a choice because it's just very hard because I like everything. So I just decide something mm -hmm. and then I just go with it. And then I'll say, once it's decided, I won't go back. I'll just go this route. Mm -hmm. Okay. I'm going to do a company. I'm going to put HR as my target because I want to make people happier. And that comes from normally a lot of brainstorm. So I take some days was like i'm just gonna brainstorm today i go to a cafe so i'm just like what would i like to do and then i write like a hundred things no a hundred it's a very good number because <laughs> then it just means you put out everything, everything. yeah mm -hmm. then I, I look at the hundred normally nothing comes that day next day i was like oh i think that idea was the best i'll just stick with it for the next few years and that's how i i i, I do most of things you, you talked also about the um, um, small companies and, and and big companies, and I feel like so um, you you broke a lot of stereotypes about that. Mm -hmm. If you don't necessarily have to go to the big bigger company to be happy, and mm -hmm. there's always a way um, to go, go to a smaller one, or if you have five thousand dollars just to open fifty thousand dollars, fifty thousand dollars, fifty thousand yes, dollars, yes, yes. you can just open your. If you uh, just want to live in Japan, yeah, yeah. your own company. Yeah, I would recommend, so if you, even if you go to this website like Wantedly or um, Japan or Rikunavi and stuff, normally a tribe, a tribe, try to think of like Indian tribe, like Uga Uga kind of tribes, <laughs> they normally have around 40 people. Because mm -hmm. when they go too much uh, around over that, they actually, some leaders leave the tribe and mount a different tribe somewhere mm -hmm. else. And that's how they grow because it seems that's the max of human people around that can be um, self-led kind of mm. with, without very structured systems. Then you have the next lap, like 150 where uh, there's other systems there. But if you're in a company with around 30, 20 to 30, you're going to be in, in a very fun position most of the time. So I would recommend going the company around there. I see. I see. That's a very great piece of advice. I agree. The less, the, the more power you have. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. So thank you, Gustavo, so much. It was a very great insight. I hope a lot of people will appreciate um, all those valuable advice and your personal story that you just um, shared with us. Um, please share this episode with your friends who are about to start their career, who are on the way to transform or change it. Let us know in the comments what you think about this episode and what you want to discuss related to career, to Gustavo or to any topic that you want to see. Um, don't forget to subscribe to our channel. We really appreciate every single feedback and every single mail that we get. We are so happy to get to hear from you, get to know you, that you're watching us and you have recommendations. And we will see you next week. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.